All right, everyone. Hi there. My name is uh, Natalie Vlatko. I am one of the coaches for uh, SIG Docs, and you are in the SIG Docs uh, community meeting that happens bi-weekly. Uh, today is Tuesday, the 23rd of January, 2024. A big hi to everyone joining us and for those watching on the recording later on. Um, this is a, a meeting as part of the uh, Kubernetes project. And so as, as part of that, um, we do follow the Kubernetes code of conduct. That does mean generally that we want everyone to respect one another and be kind to one another. That is not only in these kinds of meetings, but also in all the ways we collaborate um, via Slack, via peers and issues and so on. Um, if you have any um, um, issues or things that you want to kind of reach out to the Kubernetes um, uh, Code of Conduct Committee about, we do have the information in our um, uh, meeting agenda there that you can um, reach out and do so. Um, and I'm just about to share my screen um, so that everyone can um, see the notes once I find the little button here as I'm not, uh, there we go. I am not Zoom savvy. Here we go. Alrighty. Um, so if I just uh, scroll down here. Um, to our meeting agenda here at the upcoming meeting. Um, the first thing I want to do is uh, possibly welcome any new contributors who are on the call who want to um, unmute or go in the chat and uh, say hello. Hi, I'm, I'm David Tassar. Uh, I did actually get a PR, a small PR merge not too long ago on the KK website, uh, just updating the versions of, uh, of, of Hugo. Um, but, but yeah. So that's me. Um, I'm at Microsoft. Um, I'm a product manager uh, for uh, upstream infrastructure, including uh, cluster, cluster API. Great. Welcome. Thanks for saying hi. Anyone else yeah. who wants to introduce themselves? Yeah. Hi. I am Kundan. I am regularly contributing to Sig uh, SigDog. Yes, I joined SigDog meeting today only, first time. But yes, I, have, I am a member in Kubernetes and I am contributing and reviewing. Hindi localization and even really all uh, website PR related to SIG uh, uh, related to SIG ne network. And I am also working in SIG network since Great. more than two years. That's awesome. Thanks so much for joining and for uh, kind of exploring other areas of the project to contribute to. That's great. Okay. Anyone else who wants to say hello who's new here? Yeah. Hey, folks. Morning, afternoon. My name is Ali Dewar. It's not my first meeting, but I recognize recognize only some people so i thought i'd introduce myself i am um a software engineer most recently working at cast and working on kubernetes backup and i'm here as part of a team hopefully to revive the arabic docs localization effort under abby and soko's guidance so uh, thanks for having me i'm glad to be here that's great welcome um and yes awesome uh um, awesome initiative uh, in terms of hoping to revive uh, docs in, in a language that is um, very prolific and, and, and well-spoken and read in, throughout the whole world, something that we absolutely need. So yeah, that's awesome. Really great work. You got it. Anyone else who wants to unmute and say hi? If there's no one else, uh, hello, I am Kohei. I work on Japanese localization, but I kind of stepped away for a while, but I want to come back again. Yeah. Great. Hi, Kohei. Welcome back. Uh, great to have you back. Um, and uh, yeah, we uh, always are happy for folks who need to take time away, um, but then can come back when their capacity is okay. That's It's always great to do. Always great. Okay, and then I see um, just in the chat there, I can see Francisco. Um, hello, uh, I, I, I can see your chat there now. I'm sorry, that took a little bit of a while. Uh, apologies that you can't speak, but hi. Um, uh, great to, great to uh, meet you, and, and thanks for uh, stopping by in the Seek Docs uh, meeting. Uh, I'm usually joined by my co-chair, Ray Lahano, um, but unfortunately, Ray was unavailable to join today. Um, and, um, and so that means I'm not only hosting, but also doing the notes all on my own, which is going to be, which is, uh, which is fun. Um, so uh, just uh, Francisco, I got your name in here. Um, I will put that in here in a second. Okay, there we go. Alrighty. Um, anyone else that I've missed um, that likes to say hi? Um, uh, not an introduction, but uh, Natalie, I can help with the note taking. Like oh, perfect. Yes, Sriram, if you would like to do that, that would be really great. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you. 
awesome. Um, that, that, yeah, that's that's uh, that's an awesome uh, hand up. Thanks so much. Um, alrighty, um, and so with that, uh, let's move on to the rest of, the rest of our general agenda. So folks who are new to uh, new to this meeting, uh, we are new to Sig Docs in general. Uh, we have an overall, uh, let's say, program that we run in Sig Docs. Um, if you can hear that noise in the background, I'm sorry. I have cats um, who are playing with things. Um, but we have an overall uh, program in Sig Docs that we call uh, Wrangling for either PRs or issues. Um, and uh, we try to list down the person that is uh, on the roster each week to either wrangle our uh, PRs and our issues so that we can push contributions through our um, our contribution kind of um, ladder there and get folks um, reviews and merged, merging of their PRs as much as we can. Um, I say as much as we can because often a lot of things that, that are coming in do require technical review as well from the appropriate SIG. So we're always trying to um, get their, get their um, input as well. And so with that, um, we always at the start of a, a specific meeting, um, jump in to uh, let people know who um, the Wranglers on shift are. And this week's PR Wrangler is Divya, one of our other co-chairs here of SIGDOCS. Um, and she has uh, um, uh, Princesso, the person with the Princesso um, as their um, at shadowing. Um, and uh, and Divya, I must say uh, on the recording, if you're watching this later, a great work with some of the PRs this week. Um, we only have in the English uh, documentation, um, about 115 PRs open at the moment, which is a great number in terms of our contribution backlog. So that's really great. Um, do want to remind folks uh, for the next week's PR Wrangler, we've got Nate Waddington, and then the following week's PR Wrangler is Anna Jung. Um, you may ask, um, how do I shadow uh, to be a, a possible uh, like a Wrangler in the very, very um, future um, when you become an approver? Well, if you'd like to sign up to become a shadow, um, feel free to look at the um, shifts for the PR wranglers. It is linked in our uh, SigDocs uh, channel, but also linked here in the um, in the meeting um, notes. Um, and you can reach out to the specific person that you'd like to shadow for wrangling, um, and they can put you on that agenda um, for uh, for that roster, should I say, for wrangling that week. Um, I will say uh, every PR wrangler kind of does things different. You can always sign up for several shifts if you wish. Um, all of us have a different way of um, going through our PRs, but we'll definitely share some useful tips and tricks with you um, in order um, to help out with that. Uh, now, the other the other role that we have that's named in, in and, and that's a, this is new. Um, uh, this is new for specifically for SIG Docs, um, is something called an issue wrangler. Now we have a lot of issues in the SIG that have been brought up right, rightly so and greatly so by a lot of our contributors and people reading and um, and uh, um, consuming our documentation um, for things that they'd like to see in terms of features or, um, or additions or maybe even bugs and certain issues with our docs. Um, but we haven't had really a lot of great capacity to be able to triage those issues so that newer contributors or even seasoned ones know what to work on and know what we're prioritizing in the SIG. Uh, so we have now an issue wrangler that is on shift every week to try and help triage as many issues as possible so that folks know what we want to be working on and how we can improve certain issues for the better. Um, so with that being said, Sriram, our note taker for today is actually this week's issue wrangler. Um, and then we have Anuj for next week. Um, and then the following week after that, also Divya. Um, if you, um, we also have a roster for the issue wrangling shifts linked there. Um, and if you are a, uh, let's say general contributor to SIG docs and know your way around in terms of what we're working on and, and what you think, um, decisions that we're making, and you'd like to do some issue wrangling, um, please reach out to Divya. Divya is uh, the uh, custodian of that uh, that current um, schedule. Um, and if you're interested in possibly doing some issue wrangling and have some experience in SIG docs, um, we would appreciate um, appreciate your help. Um, we do need folks who've been around for a little while so that they know how to triage issues on their own. So that would be the only uh, um, caveat there. Um, any questions on everything I've just mentioned so far? Uh, let me just quickly check the chat. Oh, Drew. Okay, she is blocked from joining the meeting, Prince uh, Princess. So, okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, down on the um, Sig release talks update, I posted a picture of what she's seeing as well. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, Oh, moved by the host. I um so me the host. Uh, before we started this meeting, we had like several bots that joined that said AI mm. something something um that we always have to kick. Um, I may have accidentally that may be on me, and I'm very very sorry for that. Um, but I tried to make sure I kick everything that says AI 
bot <laughs> or AI in the name. Um, so um, that might be absolutely on me. So um, I will reach out to uh, um, the princess after this and then and, and double check that. I'm very, very sorry about that if that was the case. Um, but we had about four bots that joined before everyone else did that I had to go ahead and kick. Um, Thank you. Yeah, um, and again, very sorry about that. If that's been the case, I'll, I'll try and troubleshoot that with uh, with her after after this meeting. Um, on that on that note of bots, I do want to um uh, have a quick uh, statement here. We have a lot of um, AI bots that do join several of our SIG meetings, um, and uh, we understand that you know there's a lot of usefulness for a lot of folks that um that uh, sign up to have these bots attend meetings and transcribe for them. Um, however, um, as a general uh, project rule, we do not actually allow those bots to come into meetings and 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 do that transcribing. And so, at the start of each meeting, the host will kick AI bots as as necessary. Um, so, for anyone who has created one and has them joining here, can you please reconsider <laughs> um, having them not join and 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 not having joined the meetings? Um, not only our SIG, but any SIGs in future. That would be really great. All right, thanks for, thanks for listening to the, the huge amount of updates and information there at the start, folks. Let's go into our agenda. We traditionally always jump into the current release that we're working on as part of SIG Docs and as part of the Kubernetes community. Um, and with that, I'd like to hand it over to Drew, who's our Docs lead, uh, to give an update for Docs in release 1.3.0. Yeah, so, um, you know, it's pretty early in the release cycle for docs. We have um, several, uh, we have several of the deadlines coming up in about a month or so. So right now, um, all the shadows are set up with their relative groups and permissions. Uh, we have onboarding scheduled for Thursday. Um, so I wanted to give a moment if any of the SIG release doc shadows are here on the call, um, a moment to introduce yourself. I think there's I see at least two folks on here. Hey everyone. Um, so I'm Daniel. So I'm one of the shadows. Um, I work currently at Isovalent. Yeah, welcome. So, um, and then, yeah, like I mentioned before, um, looks like Princess had some trouble joining today. Other than that, the only other update I have is I have a, um, under the uh, PRs, I think that's like on the next page, but I had posted a link. There's a branch sync that's available. So if um, anybody's available to give that a review, uh, that'd be great. We could get that merged in. Great. Thanks, Drew. Thanks so much. Um, great uh, great to see the branch syncs, uh, syncs happening as well regularly and, and getting updates on that too. That's awesome. Um, all right. And thanks to the shadows who introduced themselves. I'll also say hi to Celeste. She's a shadow too, of uh, old kind of old hand at Sig Docs and uh, probably didn't want to say hi. Um, but uh, but yeah, also welcome to everyone who's um, shadowing also for the first time. That's uh, that's great. Um, I would like to now move over to comms uh, for release comms for uh, their update. Hi, this is Kristen. I'm the comms lead for 1.30. And uh, all our shadows have been onboarded, set up with the right groups and permissions. Uh, two of them are here today are already well known to you. Uh, and then we have another who is new. So it, um, it, we can start with Amit. Uh, hey folks, this is Amit here. I'm new to uh, the comm shadow and I'm basically trying to onboard myself um, along with a lot of Kristen's help and um, all of my team's efforts. Thanks, folks. Also, thank you. Great. Thanks, Amit. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks so much. Um, for folks who don't know, funnily enough, I'm also a shadow for release comm this cycle, as well as being the Seek Docs co-chair. Um, and so it's a uh, very unlikely you'll hear from me that often, uh, given I have to uh, 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 host a lot of these meetings. Um, but once Kristen wants me to give an update, I absolutely will. Um, and then Abby, um, our localization so project uh, co-lead is also um, another shadow with release um, comms as well. Alrighty, thanks so much uh, for updates on the release. Uh, um, yes, it's very early in the release, so likely not much going on. But as we progress through through the release cycle this this time around, there'll be a lot more a lot more going on. So for folks who are newer to Seek Docs, there is more more meaty goodness coming up in the in the in the release updates uh, later on in the in the cycle. Any questions or comments uh, on the release updates before we move on? All 
All right, thanks so much. Um, moving down down the agenda to issues and PRs, Drew, I see that you've um, added in here uh, the uh, the branch sync, which is great. Um, someone who is a uh, who is a, a SIG docs review or likely one of us in the, in um, either a tech lead or or, or a co-chair capacity will hopefully review that soon. Um, I know Ray will be online later on as well, so Ray will be available to review also. Um, great. Any other issues or PRs that folks on the call would like to bring up for today's meeting? Um, bar from the next discussion point that we'll get to in a second, but any other issues or PRs? Just check the chat. I guess. Yeah, uh, I have one, uh, Natalie. Uh, regarding the contributions, uh, there are pages which we have uh, regarding contributions to upstream Kubernetes and generation of reference API docs. Uh, these pages, I think, have been outdated for uh, quite some time now. So there are a few issues which are already raised for that. Uh, the thing what I am seeing is uh, it becomes a problem for new contributors if they are wanting to set up their local development environment in order to get these uh, document generation working for them. So if there is a way in which we could probably have some kind of, you know, prioritization done for these issues, that would help. What I'm seeing is, th is that different people are trying to contribute to these issues, but uh, they are working individually. And there are these two or three pages which are kind of related to each other. So unless the changes are done in a, in a synchronized manner, uh, we may not get the necessary output. So this is, yeah. this was just something that I wanted to do. So. Great, thank you for raising that, Azia. Um, it is absolutely known um, to our SIG, uh, given especially your point around the synchronization of the work. Um, Reference documentation for SIG docs is actually a sub-project. Well, should be a sub-project of our SIG. Um, and at the moment, it is very understaffed and under underloved um, as a specific uh, project on its own. And um, our tech lead, uh, Chi Ming, is generally kind of doing a lot of it on his own. And so um, in, a, in our, our maintainer track talk for KubeCon 2023 in North America last year, um, myself and Divya, um, basically did a talk of all of the different issues and work that we're trying to prioritize in SIG docs and where we need help. And this specific um, uh, recruiting of people to be part of the reference documentation kind of team to start working on this in that synchronized manner was one of the areas that we called out. And it will be something that myself and Divya and Ray as co-chairs are trying to prioritize in terms of get people on board to uh, to, to get fixing. Um, but it does take a bit of effort in terms of getting folks um, aligned to the work that needs to be done and working together under that sub project banner. And you're absolutely right. It, it makes it very difficult if the work isn't synchronized, hence it being this sub project of a small team of people that can work together themselves rather than needing um, larger kind of community, uh, uh, let's say review or output. Um, mm -hmm. It is something that is, yes, it's still an issue. Um, and again, one that we are trying to prioritize and, and work on. Um, so if anyone on the call watching later, um, or if you know of anyone that may be interested in wanting to work on reference docs as a, as a bit of a speciality or specific area within docs itself, um, that's something that we're looking for. Uh, um, knowledge of Go is going to be very, very required here. Um, it is not going to be something that a completely new contributor to open source perhaps um, may, may, or completely new to developing in the open may be, may be um, uh, comfortable with, but definitely folks who've been around docs or Kubernetes for a while with the knowledge of Go, is this going to be something that, uh, that will be helpful and worthwhile to, um, to contribute to? We will, um, what I can do Aditya is, um, I'll, I'll circle back with um, Divya and Ray, my co-chairs, of how we can better publicize that information. Um, that talk was one way, but we need to do better at doing more publicization of this is an area that we need help with. Um, and uh, if you have suggestions around this, we're open to hearing about that. Uh, but yeah, we definitely need to do better in publicizing the help that we need there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up.
yeah i have seen that many issues are opening in our sig docs in which people are trying to update do their docs and which is not matching with upstream code site so sometimes it used to be a difficulty because the people are updating sig docs docs they don't have information of upstream code and all so i would like to contribute in sig uh, network area also that because i have worked in sig network and i have information of that code also so i can relay even contribute and review also in that okay. area that's great that's that's awesome kundan i can um i can connect with you afterwards to give you the relevant information that we myself and divya had collected for that specific talk where we called out the issues that we have on the reference docs and what we need help with um and chiming um which is spelled Q I M I N G for Sri Ram, um, our 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 tech lead. Uh, yeah, they thank you for spelling his name correctly. Um, yeah, he's he will be a person to reach out to, but he's also um not always available uh for these specific meetings given uh, time zone um issues, and so we'll likely be um available for the APAC uh, um friendly meetings as well. Um, it can be something that perhaps we can ask him to attend a specific meeting, and folks can brainstorm and talk about things in the meeting. That could be a a possible a possible scenario. I can see. Um, but thank you so much for uh, putting your hand up. That's a, a that's a great great shout. Alrighty. Any other questions or comments um, or um, additional PRs or issues um, that they want to bring up before we go down to general discussion? Okay, um, so thanks so much for your patience, uh, David, who's uh, who's joining us uh, at the NC Docs for the first time. Um, where I, this came up in the um, in our SIG Docs Slack, but I'd like to hand it over to you to uh, open up discussion here for Carpenter. Cool, thanks. Yeah, uh, it's actually uh, just this. I'm noticing that this is a at least a pattern across those two repositories, and the pattern is there is some core provider piece of code slash docs um, and. The two examples I give, right, is cluster API and then Carpenter as a core. Those those pieces of software and, and products have like a core piece of content and knowledge to them and they iterate like on their own path, on their own pace. And then there's also like dependent providers uh, basically for, for that same code. So cluster API has you know, like 20, 30 providers and each of those providers, you know, whether it be AWS or Azure, right? Um, each of those have their own, you know, versioning and release cycle and docs. Um, same thing with Carpenter, right? And so this is, this is like, uh, I, I'd imagine there's other, <laughs> other scenarios like this out there. Um, these are just two of them. And so I'm trying to get kind of just feedback on this this general pattern of how do you have a reasonable docs scenario when you have this in mind you know there's some people are saying well just embed everything on just the core site and then you know you know like or just don't do a doc site on the provider side um i'm i'm kind of proposing this hybrid approach where you have like kind of the core concepts uh, on, on the core site um you know, and all this is using Hugo Doxy templating uh, at, at the at the core of it. Mm -hmm. um, but then you actually have a uh, kind of a, a little this this approach where there's a embedding effectively uh, uh, for the repos. So the idea would be like uh, an example would be like quick start. So you know, you want to have a quick start for how do I get going with Carpenter for Azure, right? Or Cap Z for for Azure, right? Um, and you have that li linked in the kind of core site, uh, like where it's listed there on the core site, but the actual document just gets like pulled in from the re from the remote repo. So if I'm on, you know, carpenter.sh, let's say that's the core website, uh, and I want to have um, the quick start for Azure, that Azure doc would actually live um, in the Azure provider repo. That way it enables you to quickly update just the Azure doc and it gets automatically reflected um, on the main, the main site, right? And so then this way you can actually quickly and more independently rev the docs um, on the provider site while on the main site, um, you kind of just have whatever's, it's pulling in, let's say the latest or the main or whatever it is 
for that quick start, right? And so this, uh, you know, there I had to kind of like work out a little bit of uh, the code from the, you know, if you go Doxy folks, they give me some some support. It's not a native feature, but there is some code that kind of helps on the doc side to, you know, kind of suck that in um, from the remote sites. Uh, it's not perfect, but I wanted to just throw that out there and see if anybody has any reservations, any suggestions to make things better or yeah, what, whatever. Um, so yeah, the first thing I want to, um, and I've just popped it on my uh, calendar, uh, on my uh, screen here, um, and thanks Celeste for linking it as well, is that we do have kind of third party content, like, uh, like a policy around this, because when you're saying docs from the provider side, that already tingles into me that these are docs that live with the specific provider that you're talking about, Azure, AWS, et cetera, that we as a project or yourself as a project wouldn't own. So in Kubernetes, we are very specific about third-party content in terms of um, if we need it to function on something, we're happy to kind of like link to third-party uh, like a software and things um, if it's necessary for Kubernetes to function in specifically that way. So we do have that specific, hmm, partly related to this discussion in the sense of like how you would get that documentation to work. It's not going to like your, your approach isn't going to be exactly the same as ours. If you want that, that hybrid approach, just because of how we approach third-party content and that ownership of that content, if that makes sense. So it, there's never going to be a true, if you're wishing to go hybrid, the same as Kubernetes docs approach. I hope I'm making myself clear. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm yeah, looking at this, and I, I think I understand. Uh, so we have, sorry, Celeste has her hand up. Um, yes. I just to address what you said is, uh, I would I would say in the, in both the cases of Cluster API and uh, Carpenter, the the Cluster API by itself and um, Carpenter Core by itself don't really do a whole like. They do. They're they're conceptually important, but like in all pretty much almost all instances, they need to be attached to a provider, right? Like to actually be sure. something useful. So in this in this reference here, you're saying only if it's necessary to function. I would say it's kind of always necessary to function. Like which is why on the end today, for instance, on the cluster API website, you actually have all the provider code embedded in to the main website. Um, where all with all the providers on their quick start and how they make it work. And understood, so, but in terms yeah. of where docs live and are maintained, that's also the differentiator here too. Yeah, that was the point that I was gonna bring up. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just gonna swoop in here. Um, so my first and biggest piece of advice to you, I don't, I'm looking this up on the CNCF's website for you right now. So I'll have an answer in like five to 10 minutes, um, but the uh, CNCF used to run tech docs office hours for all of the projects to come and ask their documentation questions to. And this would be a really question, good question to bring because it is the technical writers who are employed by the CNCF. For further reference, I used to be one of those technical writers, which is why I'm telling you um, that's a good question to ask there just for general advice. But I will, I am here, so I will also give you this general advice. Um, I was a little confused at first as to what your question was and whether you were trying to um, how whether you were trying to incorporate um, Carpenter's docs into Kubernetes.io or you have a slightly different question, which is you have a separate provider which does very specific things, and then you have Carpenter on its own. Um, so really, the question is, how do you want to slice this block of cheese? Um, so. Like Natalie said, the um, the key thing here is going to be about maintenance. And the real question you want to ask yourself is like, presuming that Carpenter and the Carpenter providers um, are separate things owned by separate parties. Um, for the provide and presuming Carpenter is owned by you and the private. Providers are owned by whoever wants to create a provider for your thing. Yeah. Um, the real issue you come across is um, if one of those providers either like disappears off the face of the earth um, or they update the functionality and they introduce breaking changes, uh, you have no control over those providers. That's the entire point of having a provider. 
um, and opening up the ecosystem in that way. Um, so it's typically from a documentation perspective, a best practice to let the providers document themselves. And then um, where this th the third party content advice that Kubernetes has can come in really handy is provide a place for them on your documentation where you can say, if you are a provider, you can add a link to this page, add the link alphabetically, and you sort of have like a little um, warning at the top of the page that says like, these are community provided. We, the owners of Cap of of Carpenter, don't really assure the quality of what's going on here. And that's how you can sort of like provide a place for your community to like advertise their thing because that is really important. Um, but also kind of protect the readers of Carpenter's documentation and say like, hey, like these are outside of our control. So like if something's out of date, like we can't really have you out here. Um, so that's the best pattern that I know of. I can probably find you a link. Um, I think it's the network provider, the CNI page actually does this where they've got like a big list um, of network providers. Oh gosh. Um, David, I just want to pause there to see if you've got any other questions. I think you have a thinking Sorry. face on. Yeah, I just, so I think that, I mean, I, I get, I get the point. Um, I, I think that there's a trade-off though, because it's in the user experience, right? Cause we, it's like already, it's already pretty dicey. Like, like we're, we're pretty far along in this game in the, in the cluster API space. Um, Carpenter is a new development where us actually today, uh, Carpenter, the Carpenter website still the uh, kind of the previous AWS where it's, where it's like, it makes the current docs from Carpenter basically makes it look like Carpenter is just still from AWS, even though we've merged into the, to the CNCF. And so it, so it, it has two, two opposite extremes and I'm trying to, I'm trying to get things aligned. So from a user perspective, right? Like with cluster API, we have a hybrid of both. We have like stuff that's from all the providers that's on the main website, um, in which that, that also we don't know, you know, if people are updating or not. Um, but then we also have content from providers like such as CAPC, right? What it's it has its own website and has its own maintenance cycle, right? And so then now you're in this weird mode of having to potentially update docs to two places. And from a user experience perspective, you're like having people click on one place to the other, and it's it's just kind of a mess, right? And and I and I feel like <laughs> I feel like there's there's a trade-off. You know, uh, possibly this this mode where I'm I'm suggesting where you selectively choose not everything because you know you don't want to have everything embedded and everything linked because that also is a pain. But maybe just for kind of key things, you know, providing somebody a getting started experience, for instance, on the main site, so they don't have to bounce back and forth and back and forth, and and now they're in all these mm. different places, you know. And so I and then in terms of the the feedback, right? If something is broken. If, if that's made clear, right, on filing an issue um, or whatever, right, like that, you know, that might help remediate the, the scenario. Or for instance, if the provider's just MIA and dead and changes something, file an issue on their thing, and then just you still have control over the, the page that embeds their content. You can just PR that and get rid of it, right? And so you still have control to get, you still have control if the other person breaks everything to just get rid of it or, or fix it or whatever, right? So yeah. Well, the other... Oh. I like, I understand what you're saying with embedding. Um, I, and I don't necessarily disagree from a sort of like content maintenance perspective, um, because as a technical writer that tends to follow the first and golden rule of technical writing, which is single sourcing and like not repeating yourself and importing content where that's available. In open source, I have personally found that it works a little bit differently because you're dealing with something which a is going to exist 10 to 15 years into the future at a minimum. And like, you may not be in your current role first off. Um, and as a result of not being in your current role, the people who inherit that documentation and that website and all these embeddings may not understand it as well as you understand it. And they may not be as equipped to maintain it as you are. So a perfect example of this, for example, that's happening right now in SIG docs is um, the Chinese version of this website uses a uh, paid Bing search. Um, and like right now there isn't really the, the person power uh, with the right knowledge to actually swap that out. <laughs> like, like there's other issues in regards to that particular issue as well, but like that is one of the big issues is like there's nobody with that, with the knowledge who's available and has time. And 
that is an issue that projects run into really, really quickly. It's also hilariously, um, it's also a part of the issue with the uh, reference API documentation that Natalie was talking about earlier as well. There is a technical requirement to that because it was set up at this point nearly 10 years ago by people who are, haven't been associated with the project for quite a while. And so the other thing you kind of have to think about when you're structuring and you're making what are fundamentally technical decisions about like the actual implementation of documentation in open source is like, what is going to stand the test of time 10 years out? So the first sort of set of concerns that I had that I brought up to you around like maintenance, where it's like you don't have control over those providers and you don't know when something is going to go out of date. That's sort of like the the person side of the maintenance, where it's like you don't know what's going on with the, a lot of those providers. Um, but the second half of that is like when everybody who is currently attached to Carpenter is no longer attached to Carpenter. What happens then? And in some ways, keeping it a little simpler, but a little harder, like a little more manual to maintain, provides you with a bit more longevity in terms of like, you know, anybody can pick it up and anybody can put it down, if that makes sense. Like the more you kind of engineer it, the more brittle it becomes in some ways. And like documenting it will only get you so far in my experience. So that's my other, I'm, I'm worried about things that may not happen. <laughs> I don't think your approach is wrong. Um, I worry that you're maybe over-engineering it. <laughs> and, okay. one thing I, and one thing I also wish to mention is that um, I think your other question as part of uh, in, in that SIG docs thread is to how you can link with SIG docs to kind of review this approach and like best practices. Um, the way we do it is exactly as described here, which is that we don't dual source, we don't host dual source content, content, we always link out. So unfortunately, we actually wouldn't be, <laughs> I mean, we would, you, I'm sure. You basically we, would just say no to this scenario altogether. I mean, just we, like we would, add we would, a link we would and recommend, then that's yeah. <laughs> yeah, we would likely recommend a different approach only because that's the way like our project specifically does so. And so what I want to suggest to you is that you not look for us for, for the answers, because I, I also agree with Celeste. I don't actually think your approach is, is, is wildly, wildly bad or wrong. Um, but we aren't the project to advise you because our approach is never going to be that, or well, actually I should never say never, but currently it is not this, and that is not our kind yeah. of rule and right. how we work. So in the chat, um, Abby and, and, uh, and Celeste have linked to, the, the next office hours that you can attend for CNCF projects specifically with this question, which I would recommend you do because at the foundation level, this is some of the support that a lot of the projects can get um, to, to help work on these kinds of things. And our ruling around third-party content and dual source content isn't um, across the CNCF, like broadly, this is for the Kubernetes project only. So it's possible that your approach is going to be sound and okayed by let's say at the CNCF level and fine. But yeah, yeah. in the chat, I believe it's um the 31st of January, okay. going to the, yeah. yeah, the tech writer, writer's office hours. Um, definitely, definitely ask there because as a, as, as a maintainer, contributor, et cetera, of a CNCF open source project that is like accepted as incubating sandbox, graduated, whatever, um, you have access to like those resources at the foundation level who can absolutely help you, yes. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate it. And I, and I absolutely, I, I think it makes a lot of sense when you have a website as large of a surface area of Kubernetes to, to have this policy. That totally makes sense to me. Like I, I would, I think I would, I would, I would agree wholeheartedly yeah. with, with that, the, the, the position you have here. I think yeah. um, where, where we're at uh, is, is a little, a little bit different of a scenario. Yeah, totally um, understandable. Yeah. And I think, I think a lot of people like to use Kubernetes as example for some best practices, but forget at the at the size and scope of what we've had to operate at in terms of some of those examples too. Um, and so I, I'm not saying that we do it the best, that we just do yeah. it different. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry that this wasn't a super um, fruitful discussion, but the, that January 31st date, if you can, if you can make it to those office hours, yeah. at least right. get in touch with those tech writers at the CNCF. That would be, I think, super helpful for you. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Uh, no problem. The one, thing, the one thing I will say that's cool is, uh, you know, trying to standardize Hugo Doxy <laughs> is good. 
Um, so like Kubernetes does use that. I'm trying to at least templatize somewhat to that as well. And I've had other previous threads on that. So in yes, terms of yeah. the over engineering, uh, in terms of the over engineering effort, I mean, I think what's helpful is if, for instance, uh, there was a standard, like there was this standardized Hugo Doxy template that gets maintained. There is one, but it's like really out of date. Um, and that everyone could kind of snap to um, across the CNCF ecosystem. That would be like, I think really, really helpful. Yeah, I actually, this we've discussed this um, like a long time ago briefly, and it's one of those things where it's just the, it's the, um, uh, just the how open source works where we also are, are relying on other projects that don't have the same kind of roadmap or, um, you know, yeah, aren't open actually... having that kind of, you know, kind of discussion or like we don't have the resources to actually try and like work on that with, with the folks who maintain Hugo. I yeah, completely get it. <laughs> Yeah, so I can actually, it's funny because I do have a little bit more context context on Doxy and the CNCF in specific, but this is about two years old at this point, so I do want to caveat that, which is uh, because Kubernetes relies on the Doxy template and because so many other CNCF projects rely on the Doxy template, there were discussions to uh, Google, actually, Hugo is its own open source project and Doxy, the template specifically, is open source via Google. Um, and to my knowledge, there were there were discussions around how we could help Google maintain Doxy a bit better. Um, I don't know where those, where those have gone, but if you attend that CNCF tech writers uh, office hours, uh, the people who were pursuing that thread of thought will be in that meeting. <laughs> so okay. that is a place to get an answer on that particular thread. <laughs> okay, cool, thank you. Thank you all for your feedback, appreciate it. No worries. Thanks for coming to the meeting and willing to discuss. It's uh yeah, yeah. I hope hopefully, hopefully you uh come to find something that's worthwhile in terms of the uh, information to use as well at the at the office hours. All right, folks, thanks, uh, thanks for that lively discussion. I want to go back to the um agenda that we have now that we've been chatting with David for a bit. Um that was the last actual item on our agenda, but I do want to quickly open it up. We've got a few minutes left here. If anyone else has anything else discussion-wise that they'd like to bring up before we uh, close this meeting. Oh, yes, I'm just catching up on the chat. Sorry, folks. Um, but yeah, uh, David, some really useful stuff in the chat for you to read up as well. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for like chatting as we chat in the on, on the chat that way. All right, if folks don't have anything else uh, that they'd like to bring up, I wanna say thanks to everyone for attending um, and for um, our uh, release folks, our release team folks for your updates. Um, the next meeting, will, um, community meeting will be um, in uh, in two weeks, um, the regular one, but there is an APAC meeting, I believe coming up. I'll have to get the information there and come back to you with the, um, Data that, but if you're part of the SIG Docs Google group, all of those meetings should be on your calendar and you can choose to accept um, them as you wish. Uh, but other than that, thank you so much, everyone. I'll stop uh, sharing my screen. Here we go, if I click the right button. Um, and just wanna say a big thanks um, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>